and that's it almost. And for differentiation integration, you need to know the partial fraction theorem. So I will just introduce to the partial fraction, and then uh, Marcello will teach you something about differentiation integration and some examples. So basically, all of you know it is just a brush up, but remember the theory because. It, I mean, uh, often in exam we mess it up. You don't remember how to read it forward in, in, in your cell in 10 standard or something like that. So, for partial fraction, I will start with the basic things. The first thing you need to know what is improper and what is proper. Not in terms of behavior, but in terms of fraction. What is improper fraction and what is a proper fraction? So, whenever you want to do a partial fraction, the first thing you have to do, you have to judge whether it is improper or proper. If it is improper, you have to convert it to the proper fraction. And the second thing, then you have to decide how do you factorize it. How do you factorize the denominator. Okay? So there will be three options mainly. The denominator can be simple non-repeating real groups. Okay? The second thing could be Repeating real root and the third thing will be imaginary root. There is another term for this, you may call it irreducible quadratic function or expression. So if anybody cannot remember, uh, by the way, if anybody has a question, stop me then and there and ask me there. Okay? So, the thing is that, I will give you a simple example to start with. Let's say, all of you remember integration, right? I mean, just the small integration, like say, can anybody tell me the result of this? Exactly. So this is x square by 2. So this is very simple thing. I mean, you directly know the formula and put it there. But there could be <coughs> integrals in other forms. Like say, you have something like something like this. So for that, how will you solve it? You have to split it. That is what partial fraction is all about. You have to split it. So you know this is what? This is x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. And here it is 1, right? So you can write here half and then you can manipulate it. Like x plus 1 minus x minus 1, yes. And then you will write it like it crosses out. One minus minus one, minus one by x plus one, it is half. Right? But the problem is that life is not that easy. So obviously you will not face this type of problems in the exam. So there will be complex numbers. I mean there will be complex structure of this function. So that's why these four rules. I mean there will be slides, I will go through the slides, but this is the four lines. Most important four lines. You have to remember these four lines. If you forget anything, just remember these four lines. So I'll start with improper and proper function. So can anybody define if you remember what is improper, what is proper function? Anyone? Okay, I'll write I'll write it for you. This is numerator. Yeah. Mm. Okay. This is denominator. Okay. Improper is what the numerator has an order greater than the. Uh, this is partially correct. 
order greater than equal to. If the denominator has an order greater than equal to denominator, then it is improper. Just for an example, so this is exactly because this is equal. So you also have to reduce this to improper. You also have to reduce. This to sorry, reduce this to proper uh, fractions. So, I mean, these are simple, right? Eh? You can do that x square plus 1 minus 1, so 1 by x square plus 1, you understand? x square plus 1 minus 1. So, then you go on like that. And it can be proved, I'm not gonna prove it here, it can be proved that it doesn't matter what is the, you know, what is the power of the fraction or something like that, it can be reduced to a factor of real roots maybe repeating or non repeating and irreducible or imaginary something in the form of let's check this I call this thing irreducible quadratic function why? I call this function irreducible quadratic function. Why? Because because this thing this equation doesn't have real roots. Okay. And how do you know that? What is the boundary to know if it has real roots or not? And what is the expression for discriminant? Uh, that's what I am doing basically. You know all of this, I am just brushing it up for you. What is the discriminant? B, B, B square minus 4 AC. Uh, so, okay, so I am wrong. These are 4 lines and this is the fifth line you have to remember. Huh? Yes. AX square plus BX plus C equals to 0. Okay? So, if B square minus 4 AC mm -hmm. is greater than equal to 0, then this equation has real roots. It can be reduced to either repeating or non-repeating, but real roots. If it is less than zero, then imagine. It might, uh, is my handwriting very bad? You can <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> so so. So anyway, so this is imaginary root, and we also call it irreducible quadratic function. So. You understand there are only three options because it doesn't matter whether it starts with x to the 6 or 7 or 13, it can be reduced to these forms. So we only bother about these three forms. Okay. So the first we are still at the first point. How to convert from improper to proper if it is not very direct, like the example I showed. It could be complex enough. How can I do that? The division. So, do all of you remember how to divide? 